this one is uh, related to problem 3.23 where we have to solve all the problems using singularity functions so to start with we will first understand what are these singularity functions now if you recall if i have a beam which is loaded in this manner which has a point load here maybe a distributed load here so one method that we have learnt is uh, using a cut method so i can go here 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 and here use four cuts to analyze this beam now from the equilibrium perspective we got two equations which was dv over dx plus q equals to zero this is the force balance equation and the mb over dx plus v equals to zero from this we can see if i integrate the first equation i can directly get the value of v by integrating q and once i get my v i can get the value of mb by one more time integrating your v value so now this fairly looks simple so that if i have the value of q i can directly go to v and once i have v i can go to mb now the problem arises when you look at these discontinuities in the beam so for example up to this section we may have q1 here we may have q2 here we have q3 and here we have q4 so for this problem your q1 is going to be 0 q2 is 0 q3 is a constant maybe w0 and q4 is also equals to 0 so still we have to do this problem four times and integrate and get the answers there so to tackle this problem we have this mathematical tool which is known as singularity function so that we can express our q for this beam as a single function and then once we have the single function we can go back to this method we start here and then we follow it up here and we can get both shear force and bending moment now looking at this you should be getting the hint that in this single function we need to have a way so that we can write down your point load and your udl and maybe your linearly distributed load right and for complex problem maybe a point moment so these are basic building blocks for any beam that we are going to analyze right so singularity functions will be that there will be a function associated with this there may be a function associated with this 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 similarly with this so let's now look at what are these basic building blocks in singularity functions we express our singularity function using this bracket here and these two parameters a and n so a is where your force is given and n tells us the nature of the force whether it's a point load whether it's a distributed load now depending on the value of n if your n is positive we write it on the top here and if your n value is negative just to keep it in mind that this is a negative value we will keep it in the subscript right here so this is how we express your functions now the next part is how do we evaluate this so in evaluation part your f and x which we have defined is blind to negative values what does this mean it means that if you check this bracket x minus a only for x greater than or equals to a this value is going to be a positive value the outcome here will be non-zero only when your x is greater than or equals to a otherwise this function will take a value of zero now this will happen only all of this will happen only when your n value is positive meaning n is written on the top that's the first step now in the second step once we have x value which is greater than a this converts itself into a simple polynomial so that it becomes x minus a to the power n and remember n value is positive so this is how you evaluate your functions and in the process because we are looking for integrations we need to have the integration set up also there so your function fnx can be written as x minus a n dx this integration will be very similar to your regular integration so this becomes power n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 for n greater than or equals to 0 now for n less than or equals to 0 we will have only two cases 
first case is x minus a minus 1 here this integration will become the power will increase one time here and in a similar manner the integration for minus 2 this will become x minus a minus 1 so this is how we are going to integrate these functions so if you have a regular n greater than power there n greater than 0 power there then it behaves as if you are doing simple integration and when you have minus 1 it becomes 0 and your minus 2 becomes minus 1 that's how we integrate this so now let's attach loads to this so if you are looking at point load so in general this point load will be given at a particular point on the beam so if it is given like this your singularity function for this will be x minus a a tells you the location of it and the subscript in this case is going to be minus 1 so there are three things that we need to take care value of the force the location of the force and since it's a point load we are writing it as minus 1 the second load that we may face in our problems is a UDL so for example if a UDL is starting at x equals to a and theoretically speaking this is going up to infinity and the value of this is given as w0 now this because it is acting downwards we can write it as minus w0 x minus a and since it's a constant force the n value is going to be zero in this case now in many of the problems this udl may be given to you as starting at a and ending at b so what do we do in that scenario so we will hypothetically extend this to infinity so once we have extended this to infinity we can write this as minus w naught x minus a zero here now we did not have this force right here we have added this from our side so how do we cancel this at this point we can add another force which is exactly in the positive direction and starting at point b so that the green one and the red one they will cancel each other now how do i write that this is going to be w naught in the positive direction starting at point b and since it's a constant force it becomes zero so now if i combine these two i get w naught in brackets x minus b zero which is the end point of udl minus x minus a to the power zero which is the starting point okay now third one is your concentrated or point moment so if there is a situation this will happen when you have fixed supports and you have a reaction coming from the support this value is m here x equals to a now this is a positive moment going clockwise so we can write this down as value of moment m times the building block for this is going to be x minus a and minus 2 right here so again here m is the value of moment that you have a is the location where it is applied and this minus 2 basically tells you that this is a point moment now there are mathematical names to all these functions so this function right here which is your point moment it is known as unit doublet function the one for your udl is your unit step function and the concentrated load or point load is your unit impulse function so now we have the basic setup ready so let's try to implement this for a simple beam so that we can understand the concept let's say we have a beam on which we have a reaction r1 coming from here we have a force 10 kilo newton right here another force 20 kilo newton right here and then we have this r2 so if I need to write Q function for this, there are total four, so we are expecting four entries here. Let's focus on all of these forces. All of these are point loads. For point loads, your singularity function is written using this format right here. Now we are going to play this for all four loads. So let's go here. So for example, if the distance here is x equals to zero here, x equals to two here, x equals to four here, and x equals to six. So for the first function, which is this one right here, 
we will write it as R1 because it is in the positive direction. X, the starting point or the point where the force is 0 and the power in this case is going to be minus 1 for the singularity function. So This is your first function. Now this one right here, the second one, this is a negative force acting downward. So we write 10 x minus the location of the force is 2 becomes minus 1 again. The third function right here, which is this one, again the force is acting downwards. So we are going to have minus 20. The location in this case is 4, so x minus 4 power becomes minus 1. The last one here, although we can write it down, but this will not play any role in our calculations and I will tell you why that will happen. So it is a positive force, so it becomes R2. Location for this is x minus 6, power is minus 1. Now focusing on this last force that we have written, since your singularity functions are blind to negative sign, inside the brackets we have x minus 6. Now your beam starts with x equals to 0 and ends at x equals to 6. So for the domain of this beam, this x minus 6 here will always be a negative number. If it is a negative number, this function right here will always give you a value of 0. So that is why while you are writing, you can always skip that force which is towards the right end of the beam. If there is any singularity function that comes with x minus the right end of the beam, x minus l for example or x minus 6 in this case, we can always skip that one and ignore that. So now we have got the value of qx in this case. So we have r1 x minus 0 minus 1 minus 10 x minus 2 minus 1 minus 20 x minus 4 minus 1. So what do we do with this? Our objective is to find out the value of shear force and bending moment. Now if you recall your equilibrium relationships, we had written two relationships here which are right here. Your V can be found by integrating Q with a negative sign and similarly your MB can be found by integrating V with a negative sign. So let us follow this. If I come here, from here to here, we are basically integrating minus Q and from here to here we are integrating minus v. So while we start expressing, one thing is we need to make sure that we are flipping the sign. So this becomes minus r1, this becomes plus 10 and this becomes plus 20. Next thing is integration. So following your integration rules, this is x minus 0. Minus 1 integration we have written earlier going to become 0. For this also x minus 2 minus 1 becomes 0 and this one also x minus 4 this minus 1 becomes 0. Next time again, we flip the sign. So, this becomes positive R1. Now, integration of 0 will become power 1 divided by 1. So, we can skip that one. This becomes minus 10. X minus 2. 0 becomes 1. Minus 20. X minus 4. This 0 becomes 1. So, now we have got single expressions for your Q value, your V value and your MB value. After this, we can just go ahead, evaluate these functions and start plotting them in the different segments of the beam. So now in our beam, we have three segments here. First one is from 0 to 2, second one 2 to 4 and third one is 2 to 6. So let's draw these three segments. First one is 0 to 2, second one is 2 to 4 and the last one is 4 to 6. So in these segments, if you look at these individual functions, we have x minus 0, x minus 2 and x minus 4. So let's see which all functions are going to be having positive inner argument here. So in the first segment, your x minus 0 is going to be positive. Second segment, x minus 0 will be positive and x minus 2 will be positive. And in the last one, x minus 0 positive, x minus 2 also positive and x minus 4 will also be positive. So when you start evaluating, in the first segment, only function that has x minus 0 will play a role. In the second one, x minus 0 as well as x minus 2 will play a role. And in the last one, all three will play a role there. Okay. So let's look at the first v1. For v1, only this function will be there. So it becomes minus r1 x minus 0 to the power 0. Now, because power is 0, so this becomes 1. So this is basically minus r1. Similarly, if you look at your mv1, we are going to evaluate only this function here. So r1 x minus 0 to the power 1. If I evaluate this as a polynomial, then R1 times X because this is going to give you X minus 0 to the power 1 which is X. 
now when you come to the second segment now in the second segment this will contribute as well as this will contribute because x minus 0 and x minus 2 both are positive there so now your v2 can be written as this one plus this one and this we have already calculated which is the value of v1 so we can write this as v1 plus whatever we get from this function right here so the value that we are going to get from this is 10 times x minus 2 0 here so if you evaluate v1 is minus r1 and power 0 again becomes 1 so this becomes 10 similarly when you look at your mb2 it's going to be this part plus this one right here this we have already calculated in mb1 so this becomes mb1 plus the second term so minus 10 x minus 2 to the power 1 and when we evaluate this as a polynomial we get mb2 equals to mvm is r1x minus 10 x minus 2 to the power 1 will become x minus 2 there now we come to the third segment in the third segment this will also come this will also come and the last one will also be there so all of these three will be there but if you notice your v2 in v2 already the first term and the second term is added there so you can write v3 in your last segment as v2 which is the first two terms plus the last term which is 20 x minus 4 to the power 0 if i evaluate this this becomes minus r1 plus 10 plus 20 coming from here so this gives us a value of v3 equals to minus r1 plus 30. likewise we can do mb3 now mb3 also we are going to get this plus this plus this up to here we have already calculated in mb2 so this is going to be mb2 plus the last term which is minus 20 x minus 4 to the power 1 substituting the value of mb2 there so this is r1x minus 10 x minus 2 minus 20 and if i substitute this as a polynomial x minus 4 to the power 1 so i can simplify this so your mb3 now is r1x if i combine these two functions so minus 30x and then plus 20 comes from the first one and plus 80 from the last one so plus 100 right here so we have got the value of v1 here which is minus r1 mb1 here which is r1 x v2 here which is minus r1 plus 10 and mb2 here which is r1 x minus 10 x minus 2 and in this third one v3 value is minus r1 plus 30 and mb3 value is r1 x minus 30 x plus 100 so we have got all three segments they are shear force values and bending moment values there now after this the only thing that is left is to draw one axis for your v for your m divided into three segments and plot this one right here this one right here and this one goes right there okay so that's how you're going to use singularity functions to figure out your shear force and bending moment diagram and plot these functions there